Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming, and we are back with another episode of Canadians Abroad. There's plenty to discuss this week as Jonathan David has a ton of transfer interest. Kyle Lahren is scoring for fun in La Liga, and there is some concerns around injuries for the Canadians national team, plus a lot more. So hopefully you guys are excited, and if you are, let's get into the episode now. We are going to kick off this week's episode with Jonathan David, who started over the weekend playing all 90 minutes as a striker in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, David had two shots, 26 touches, he completed 80% of his passes, and had a bit of a frustrating game up front. Lille didn't need David to score as they won the match 3-0 against Ajaxio to sit 5th place in the table with a 17-8-8 record. Despite not scoring in the match, the transfer news has not died down yet surrounding Jonathan David. According to Lekeep, David is attracting interest from Tottenham, Chelsea, and PSG, although the managerial uncertainties surrounding the three clubs could be an issue. Manchester United and Bayern Munich are also interested. Both of their managers will be there next season and do rate David. Where will David sign? I don't know. However, back in December, he had this to say about his future. I don't know if I can find myself anywhere other than the Premier League. Now, you would have to imagine if he goes to the Premier League, it will be to one of the big six, so this should be a very fascinating summer for Jonathan David. Kyle Lahren started once again for Via the lead over the weekend, playing all 90 minutes as a striker in a 5-3-2 system. In the match, Lahren had 5 shots, 33 touches, he created 1 chance and found himself a goal. Lahren stepped up to score a penalty and he sent the keeper the wrong way. It's his 7th goal in the Liga and he has now scored in back-to-back -back matches. Lahren has truly found his feet in the Liga as he now has 7 goals and 2 assists in 13 appearances so far this season. Valladolid, however, went on to lose the match 5-2 against Atletico Madrid to sit 16th place in the table with a 10-5-17 record. Valladolid were also in action midweek as they took on Rio Vallecano in a match where Kyle Lahren started once again as a striker in a 3-4-1-2 system. Lahren had a few good chances in the match but unfortunately was not able to find the back of the net and Valladolid went on to lose 2-1 and are now only one point out of the relegation zone after Getafe won their match. It's very tight in that final relegation place as Getafe sit in 18th with 34 points, Valencia are in 17th with 34, and Valladolid are in 16th with 35. Unfortunately right now for Valladolid, they don't know whether they're going to stay up or stay down and that could potentially affect what Kyle Lahren does next season. I'm fairly confident after the way that Kyle Lahren has settled into La Liga, he will want to continue to play here. If that is going to happen, Vitaly need to avoid relegation, and to help do that, Kyle Lahren will need to continue scoring his goals. It really is tremendous what Lahren is doing this season with Valladolid, especially considering when the Premier League links were out there, dating back to his time at Besiktas, I was always very skeptical if he could fit in the Premier League just because I didn't think technically he was up to snuff, but he has completely shut me up since moving to Spain um, because even in games now, you're seeing him executing back heel flick assists and combining nicely with the wingers and really utilizing his all-around complete game, not just scoring goals, but also now setting them up. And that's been an amazing trend we've seen since he's come back from the international break with Canada, is that Laren is now getting more involved in those playmaking aspects. And I know that his future is clearly a subject of discussion now because via the lead, even though they're somewhat comfortable right now in the relegation battle, if they do go down, there is a potential obligation to buy from Club Bruges dating back to his loan deal from January. So if they do end up needing to buy him or are forced to buy him and they go down, that could really add an interesting wrinkle to this. But all signs are looking encouraging in terms of via the lead staying up, Laren possibly getting purchased by via the lead permanently, and then him maybe finding a new home in Spain. There's more transfer news surrounding Tejan Buchanan as The Athletic reported that Inter Milan are in talks with Club Brugge for Tejan Buchanan and he's being looked at to replace Denzel Dumfries who's being targeted by Newcastle. However, nothing is done yet and the deal will probably not take place until the summer. Inter Milan have been interested in Buchanan since January but Club Brugge did not want to sell him mid-season. A potential deal for Buchanan this summer is expected to be north of 15 million euros, which would make him the third most expensive Canadian international transfer of all time behind only Jonathan David and Alfonso Davies. There will be a lot of pressure on Tejan Buchanan if he moves to a big club like Inter Milan, but I think that he's proven with his time in Major League Soccer, Club Bruges, and for Canada that he's ready to make this type of step. Alistair Johnson was back in action over the weekend, starting in the Scottish Cup semi-final matchup against Celtic's arch-rivals Rangers. Johnson only lasted 54 minutes before he had to be substituted following a collision with Bersic. Celtic went on to win the match 1-0 against Rangers to book their place in the final. So far, Johnson has an incredible Old Firm Derby record. He has played in four matches, winning three of them and drawing once. 
Johnson did join his teammates on the pitch after the match to celebrate the win on crutches with his right ankle in a moon boot. After the match, Celtics manager had this to say about Johnson's injury. He got a sore one. He wouldn't have come off unless it was a significant one, but we'll wait and see. He was throwing his crutches around after the game. You know what it's like. They feel no pain afterwards. But we'll look at it and see what he's like tomorrow. Although there is some good news for Canada fans, as journalist Scott Burns of Record Sport reported that Johnson is likely to be out for the next three to four weeks. This means that Johnson will miss a few of Celtic's next league matches, however there is a chance that he will return for the Scottish Cup Final on June 3rd. It's also likely now that Johnson will be available for Canada for the upcoming CONCACAF Nations League and Gold Cup and he will try to help Canada win some silverware. Very huge and th this is going to have ramifications possibly if the injury carries into the summer and, and affects Nations League as well as the Gold Cup. I do wonder if Johnston might have been one of those players who might have just been given the summer off regardless just because he's played so much football over the last year and a half that maybe John Herman would have said to him, hey, listen, Ali, I, I know that you are a key member of this team, but you've played a lot. Maybe take a few weeks extra off and kind of come back in to the next window fresh and enter the season fresh. But... We still don't know at the time of recording, obviously, what that injury is in terms of the significance of it or how long he's going to miss. The fact that he was out there at full time of the Scottish Cup semifinals on crutches, seemingly looking somewhat limber for someone who just suffered that sort of an injury in a walking boot on crutches, I think is encouraging. But this could open up the door for a Mo Farsi. This could open up the door for a Dominic Zator possibly to get some minutes at right center back in the back three. Um, the options are really endless here. If Johnson does go down, that would be the one consolation is that it's time for that next man up mentality that the national team preaches. Milan Borian started between the sticks this past weekend for Red Star, keeping a clean sheet in a 4-0 win. With the result, Red Star set first place in the table with a 28-5-0 record, and just in case you missed it, they also recently clinched their sixth straight Serbian league title. Red Star secured the title with six matches to spare on April 22nd, and since have expanded their lead to 24 points with four matches to go. This is an incredible achievement for a club that has now won a total of 34 national championships. Borian had a fantastic season as well, playing a crucial role in the team's success. He has only allowed 12 goals in 30 league matches, keeping 19 clean sheets, and makes an average of 1.9 saves per match. Borian was also in action midweek in the quarterfinals of the Serbian Cup, where the match ended 0-0 with Red Star advancing 4-2 on PKs. Borian was the hero of the match, and Red Star will be heading into the semifinals with the goal of winning this competition for the third consecutive season. It's also looking likely that Borian will be the captain for Canada in the two tournaments this summer, and will try to help the Canadians find their first trophy since the 2000 Gold Cup. This past weekend, Jordan Heidema started and played all 90 minutes as a striker in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, Heidema had three shots, 39 touches, she won a penalty, and scored the 90th minute equalizer which came from a perfectly placed header. OL drew the match 2-2 against Racing Louisville to sit second place in the table with a 3-1-1 record. This was a really impressive performance from Heidema, which could potentially kickstart her season. It's been a good run of form for uh, Jordan Heidema, who, I mean, you know, just that, that goal on the weekend was a great sign of confidence. Um, you know, OL Reign were down to, you know, on the road to Louisville and to score late 90th plus minute. Uh, equalizer and just a very powerful commanding header from Hoidema. It's good to see and she's starting to score a lot of those more, you know, number nine fox in the box poacher type goals lately. Uh, you know, recently scored in the Challenge Cup. Even last year in the OL Rang when, you know, she, she kind of found a bit of form at the end of the year. She was really starting to score these sort of you know, true number nine goals. And I just say that because uh, at PSG she didn't really get a chance to, to lead the line as much. She often came off the bench. Uh, you know, I was fighting for minutes and, you know, when she did get some minutes, she, she thrived like in the Champions League, for example, last year, she scored all those goals. But I think this this OL Reign move has been huge just for that side of the game because she grew a lot technically. She grew a lot in terms of her hold up play, her movement at, at, at PSG. But now with OL, she's really been able to just score goals, find form, be confident. And I think that that's huge for Canada because you know, they need all the options they can get up front and then inform Hoytema is a good one to have. I do have some good injury news to report as Junior Hoylet has returned from injury and played in his first match since February 25th. This past weekend, Hoylet started and played 68 minutes as a left mid in a 4-4-2 system. In the match, he had one shot, 45 touches, three successful dribbles, and five recoveries as Reading went on to draw the match 1-1 against Wigan to sit 22nd place in the table with a 13-11-21 record. 
Reading have not won in 12 matches, and due to the six points that were deducted from them earlier this season, they've officially been relegated to League One. Hoylet's contract expires on June 30th, 2023, and it will be very interesting to see what's next for the 32-year-old. Hoylet will have the opportunity to draw up some interest for his services this summer, as he's expected to star in the upcoming CONCACAF Nations League and Gold Cup. Dual national Daniel Jebison was in action over the weekend and made quite the impact coming off the bench in the 61st minute. Jebison created four chances, had two successful dribbles, 23 touches, and picked up two assists as Sheffield United went on to win the match 4-1 over Preston North End to sit second place in the table with a 27-7-10 record. After that impressive showing from Jebison, he started in the next match playing as a striker in a 3-4-2-1 system. He lasted 52 minutes before getting subbed out as Sheffield United lost 1-0 against Huddersfield. Sheffield United are returning to the Premier League, however, we will have to wait and see if Jebison will be joining them. This season so far, he started four matches, played in a total of 15, and only has one goal and two assists. I believe it's likely he will spend next season out on loan in the championship or maybe somewhere abroad. Jebison has a very bright future ahead of him, and the Canada fans will be hoping to see him represent the Maple Leaf at the upcoming Gold Cup. Charles Andreas Brim featured over the weekend, starting and playing 84 minutes as a striker in a 3-4-2-1 system. In the game, Brim had 29 touches, had 3 shots, created 2 chances, he scored a goal, picked up an assist, and was the man of the match in yet another impressive performance. FC Eindhoven went on to win the match 2-0 against Young Untrecht to sit 7th place in the table with a 15-9-11 record. Brim takes his tally up to 11 goals and 8 assists in 27 league appearances this season. If he continues with this type of form, you would have to imagine he will play some type of role at the upcoming Nations League and Gold Cup. It's going to be close to see if Brim can make one of those final roster spots, but right now he's battling with the likes of Akinol and Cavallini, and between the three of them on form, I think Brim has the advantage. Over the weekend, Steven Vittoria was in action, starting and playing 59 minutes as a center back in a 4-3-3 system. In the match, Vittoria completed 89% of his passes, had 43 touches, 6 recoveries, 2 blocks, helped his side pick up a clean sheet, and scored the match-winning goal which came from a corner kick that Vittoria beautifully headed home. Chavez went on to win the match 1-0 to sit 8th place in the table with a 10-10-10 record. Vittoria's impressive season continues, and even at the age of 36, you would have to imagine that he's going to play a big role for Canada in the two tournaments this summer. Over the weekend, Marco Bustos came off the bench for Varnamo in the 64th minute and scored a wonderful goal from outside the box. Unfortunately for Varnamo, though, it wasn't enough as they went on to lose the match 3-1 to sit 10th place in the table with a 2-0-3 record. This is not the result that Bustos would have wanted. However, his goal could go a long way to help him settle into his new club. Yeah, for Ford, there's uh, no better way to, to find a bit of confidence than, than a goal and well-taken goal. And with that, he was he was quite far out, hit it on his left. We've seen him, uh, you know, hit a hit a shot or two like that in his days in the CPL. We know that that quality's there, and he, he showed it. And I think it's good because he, he's had that chance to to play, you know, regularly with Varnamo since arriving. He's been playing on the right wing. Uh, you know, being able to cut inside, play in the middle, kind of similar, very similar role to what he played at Pacific. And, you know, it, it's been an adjustment to, to the speed of play, the level of the Elsven scan. Uh, but he's done well to get 45 to 60 minutes in most games, uh, build his confidence. And a goal like this just shows you can play at this level, you can do something at this level. So I only expect this to, to boost Marco Bustos' confidence. And that's huge for him as he, you know, he adjusts and, and really makes this be this next step. And then, of course, the Canada aspirations will always be there. And, you know, the league, the Elsven scan is a league that John Herman will take note of. It's a good top flight European league and, and any player performing in there will have their, their eye on them. So uh, Marco Bustos, the more goals he scores like this, the, the more moments he has, the, the, the more attention he will grab from Herdman and his staff. Over the weekend, Jacob Schaffelberg came off the bench in the second half and put the game to bed after scoring in the 91st minute, helping Nashville pick up a 3-1 win over Atlanta United to sit fourth place in the East with a 4-3-3 record. Schaffelberg's goal was really well taken as he sprinted upfield to run onto Hani Mukhtar's well-timed through ball. He fought off two defenders and beat the keeper at his near post. Schaffelberg has not started in three matches, and this is exactly what he needed to do to fight his way back into the starting 11. Over the weekend, Dane St. Clair started between the sticks for Minnesota United in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, St. Clair had two saves, 44 touches, 11 recoveries. He faced an XGOT of 0.21, keeping a clean sheet as Minnesota went on to draw the match 0-0 against Dallas to sit 7th place in the West with a 3-3-3 record. St. Clair's looked very good for Minnesota United so far this season, and he will be battling it out with Maxine Crapo and Milan Boran to be the starting keeper for Canada at one of the two tournaments this summer. 
Now, in my opinion, Borean probably has the advantage, but let's just say Borean doesn't feature in the Gold Cup. This could be the perfect opportunity for Dane St. Clair to take on that opportunity and be the starting keeper for Canada. That is all the time we have for in this edition of Canadians Abroad. I really hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to tune in for next week's update.